Book of Heaven, Volume 29, Part 13 August 22, 1931 Divine Messengers That Bring the Good News to the Celestial Fatherland How the Divine Will is not content with only words, but wants to do deeds. My abandonment in the divine volition continues, and I try as much as I can to unite my little acts to those of the divine will, so as to form a single one with its acts, almost to be able to say, Whatever you do, I do. I plunge myself into your light in order to extend myself together with you and in this way I can embrace and love all with your own will. But while I was doing this, my beloved Jesus told me, My daughter, the acts done in my divine will have such virtue and power as to transform themselves into divine messengers, which set out from the earth for the vault of the heavens. And since these messengers set out from within my divine will, but are sent by a creature who operates and lives in it, they bring with themselves free entrance into our celestial fatherland, and bring the happy news that the earth wants the kingdom of our will. Because a little exiled one lives and operates in it, and does nothing but make use of that same will that reigns in heaven, in order to ask that it may descend to reign upon earth as it reigns in heaven. These messengers of light, how many secrets do they not hide? Already on its own, the light of our divine will is the secretary of all things, divine and human and it knows how to keep the true secret. And while in appearance one sees light, inside this light it hides all secrets and all things. No one can escape it. This light contains the great secret of the whole history of creation, and it confides its secrets only to one who wants to live in its light. In fact, the light has the virtue of disposing the creature to live and to comprehend its divine secrets. And if needed, it will dispose her to lay down her life, so that it may give life to its intimate secrets and to the purpose of creation which was only that our will would reign on earth as it does in heaven. Therefore, my daughter, if you remain attentive to live always of my will, it will entrust to you all the secrets of the history of creation. It will make in your soul the deposit of all its joys and its intimate sorrows, and as to its own secretary, with its vibrating light, transforming itself into brush, it will paint in you the sun, the heavens, the stars, the sea, the beautiful flowerings. In fact, when it speaks, it is not content with only words. To its inextinguishable love, and to its interminable light, words are not enough, but it wants to do deeds. And therefore, with its creative virtue, while it entrusts its secrets, it speaks and forms the new creation in the creature. It is not content with telling its secrets, but it wants to do the works that its secrets contain. Therefore, 
in the creature who lives in my will. New heavens, suns more refulgent than the very creation, shall be seen. In fact, you must know that my will has a yearning, an ardent desire of wanting to always operate. But it keeps looking for one who wants to listen to it, and who wants to receive its creative virtue, so as not to expose its works to uselessness. And in order to be sure, it keeps looking for its own will in the soul, and in finding it, it finds its works secured by its same divine fiat. Therefore it spares itself in nothing, and there it does the most beautiful works and the greatest prodigies. O power of my omnipotent will, if all knew you, loved you, and let you reign, the earth would turn into heaven. Fiat August 30th, 1931 How God Wants the Creature with Himself in Order to Give Her the Surprise of New Gifts The Love, the Order, the Inseparability of All Created Things and how the creature is bound to them. I was doing my acts in the divine volition, praying it to invest all my being, so that heartbeats, breaths, words, prayers, might come out of me as many repeated acts of divine will. Oh, how I would love to be a continued act of it! to be able to say, I have in my power all your acts, your very love, and therefore I do what you do, and I am not less than you in loving you. It seems to me that true love cannot restrict itself, but it wants to expand so much as to want the infinite love in its power and since it is not given to the creature to be able to embrace it, she turns to the divine will in order to have it, and plunging herself into it, she says with highest contentment, I love with infinite love. But while my little intelligence was wandering in the divine fiat, my always lovable Jesus told me, My daughter, one who contents himself with the little love that the creature possesses, is not of the nature of true love. More so, since the little love is subject to extinguishing, and in contenting oneself, the necessary source comes to be missing, which gives the life in nourishing the flame of true love. This is why, my daughter, our paternal goodness in creating man gave him all the freedom to be able to come to us as many times as he wanted. No limit was set. On the contrary, in order to encourage him more to come to us very often, we told him in advance that each time he would come, he would be given the beautiful surprise of a new gift. For our inextinguishable love, it would have been a sorrow if it did not have always something to give to its children. Even more, it anxiously awaits for their coming to give them now a surprise. Now, another of gifts one more beautiful than the other our love wants to banquet together with the creature and is happy with preparing the banquet at its own expense so as to have the occasion to always give 
it acts just like a father who wants the crown of his children around him not in order to receive but to give and prepare feasts and banquets so as to amuse himself together with his children what sorrow would it be for a loving father if the children did not go or he had nothing to give them for our paternal goodness there is no danger that we might have nothing to give him but there is the danger that the children would not come and our love raves for it wants to give and in order to be more sure on where the creature must put our gifts it wants to find in her our divine will which shall preserve the infinite value of our gifts and the creature shall no longer feel small in her love in her prayers in her acts but together with our will she shall feel that an infinite vein flows within her in such a way that everything becomes infinite for her love prayers acts and everything therefore she shall feel within herself the contentment that she is not less than us in loving us because she has a divine volition in her power and it runs in her acts then i continued my round in the acts that the omnipotent fiat had done in creation in order to love honor and thank what it had done in it and i comprehended the order the union the inseparability that all created things possess and this only because a divine will dominates them so the whole creation can be called a single continuous act of supreme will and since one is the will that reigns it maintains the peace the order the love the inseparability among all created things otherwise if there were not one will alone to dominate them but more than one there would not be true union among them on the contrary the heavens would wage war against the sun the sun against the earth the earth against the sea and so forth they would imitate men who do not let themselves be dominated by one single supreme volition and there isn't true union among them but one is against the other my jesus my love oh how i wish to be one single act of your will to be at peace with all and possess the union the inseparability of the heavens of the sun of everything and you would find in me the love that you placed in the heavens in the sun in everything and my sweet jesus added my daughter all things created by us possess the unitive force and the bond of inseparability our divine fiat as much as it is able to do things that are distinct among themselves in such a way that one created thing cannot say i am like another the heavens cannot say that they are sun the sun cannot say that it is sea however it does not know how to do things that are isolated and separate from one another it likes union so much that it puts them in the condition that one cannot separate from the other and while they are distinct and each one does its office yet in the motion in the going around that they do the union and the order that they have is so great 
that one is the motion. One is the incessant round that they do. But why does my fiat make them move and go around continuously? To give them the race of love toward the one who created them, and to make them run toward the creatures, so as to let them exercise their office of offering the love of their creator. Since for the creatures were they created. Now the creature possesses the bond of all created things, and goes around together with them. And here is how, if you breathe, it is the air that allows you to breathe, to palpitate, and your blood to circulate in your veins. Now the air gives you the breath, the heartbeat, and then it takes it to give it back to you again. And while it incessantly gives and takes your breath, it goes around. It runs together with all created things. And your breath goes around. It runs together with the air. Your eye, by filling itself with light, runs with the sun. Your feet run together with the earth. But do you know who has the great good of feeling vividly the force, the union, the order, the inseparability of all created things, and the race of her whole being toward her creator? One who lets herself be dominated and possesses the life of my will. My will has changed nothing of the way in which all things originated, but rather it is the creature that changed things by not doing my will. But one who does it and lets herself be dominated holds her place of honor as she was created by God, and therefore we find her in the sun, in the heavens, in the sea, together with the union of all created things. And, oh, how beautiful it is to find, together with all things created by us, she, only for love of whom were they made by us. Fiat September 7th, 1931 Roll call of all the works come out of the fiat. The palpitating life of the creature in it. Protections, speaking voice, a sailor's. My poor mind, going around in the acts done by the divine will, keeps tracing everything it has done in order to recognize them love them, appreciate them, and then offer them as the most beautiful homage to the same divine will, as fruits worthy of its works. But while I was doing this, my sweet Jesus told me, My daughter, how pleasing it is to my heart, and how sweet it sounds to my hearing. You're tracing everything that my divine will has done in order to recognize it, love it, and give it to us as the most beautiful homage of the love that we had for creatures in creating so many things for love of them. By tracing them, your soul rings the bell to as though roll call all the works come out of the divine fiat to say to us, how many beautiful things you have created for me, to give them to me as gifts and pledges of your love. And I, making them my own, give them back to you as gifts and pledges of my love for you. So we feel the palpitating life of the creature in our works, her little love flowing within ours, 
and the purpose of creation realized. To know our works and the purpose for which they were made is the point of support of the creature, in which she finds a divine will in her power, and it is our pretext for giving her other surprises of new gifts and graces. And I, my love, a thought afflicts me. I fear I may lack the continuation of my acts in your divine will, and as I would interrupt the sound of my bell, you, offended by me, might put me aside, and will not give me any more grace to make me live in your will. And Jesus added, My daughter, do not fear. You must know that one step gives life to another step. One good is life and support of another good. One act calls to life another act. And even evil, sin, is life of other evils and of other sins. Things never remain isolated, but almost always have their sequence. Good is like the seed which possesses the generative virtue. As long as one has the patience to sow it into the bosom of the earth, it will produce ten, twenty percent. The same for the creature. If she has patience and remains attentive to enclose in her soul the seed of the good that she has done, she shall have the generation, the multiplicity, one hundredfold of the good acts that she has done. And if you knew what it means to do a good act, each act is a protection that she acquires, and a voice speaking before our throne of the one who has done a good. For each additional act of good, so many more defenders does the creature have for her defense. And if the circumstances of life cause her to find herself in such constraints and trials that it seems that she might want to vacillate and fall, the good acts that she has done take on the appearance of assailers, and they assail us, so that the one who has loved us and has had a sequence of many good acts may not vacillate and they run around the creature as supporters, that she may not give up in the trial. And suppose that there had been a succession of acts done in our will. Oh, then in each act there is a divine value and virtue defending the creature. We see in each of her acts our will as though engaged. Therefore we ourselves make ourselves defenders and supporters of the one who has given life in her acts to our divine fiat. Can we perhaps deny anything to ourselves? Or disregard our will operating in the creature? No, no. Therefore, do not fear, but rather abandon yourself like a little newborn in our arms, that you may feel our support and the protection of your very acts. Do you think that a repeated continued good is nothing? It is divine properties that one acquires. It is armies that are formed, that make one conquer the celestial fatherland. It happens to one who has continued many good acts, as to someone who has acquired many properties. If he has a setback, it won't be able to do him much harm, because the many properties shall fill the void of the setback that he suffered. 
but if someone else has acquired little or possesses nothing a small setback is enough to leave him destitute of the most squalid misery such is to do much good or little or nothing this is why i always repeat to you be attentive be faithful to me and let your flight in my will be continuous after this he added my daughter you must know that when you keep disposing yourself to do your acts in my divine will my will remains conceived in your act and as you do it you give it the field to form its life in the act that you do not only this your new acts serve as nourishment to those already done in fact since my divine will is life once it has been enclosed in the acts of the creature it feels the need of air of breath of heartbeat of nourishment here is the necessity of the new acts because these serve to maintain its divine air its continuous breathing its uninterrupted heartbeat and the nourishment in order to grow my very will in the creature see then the great necessity of the continuation of the acts in order to let it live and reign in the creature otherwise my will would be uncomfortable without its full triumph in all her acts fiat september twelfth nineteen thirty one True love forms the stake on which to consume oneself in order to make the beloved live again. The Day of Jesus in the Eucharist My abandonment in the divine volition continues, and while I was doing my acts, I thought to myself, But is it really true that my sweet Jesus likes the continuity of my little acts and jesus making himself heard told me my daughter a broken love can never give of heroism because by not being continuous it forms many voids in the creature which produce weakness coldness and are almost in act of extinguishing the little flame that was lit and therefore it takes away from her the fortitude of love which with its light makes one comprehend who it is that one loves and with its heat it maintains the flame lit which produces the heroism of true love so much so that she feels happy to give her life for the beloved a continuous love has the virtue of generating in the soul of the creature the one whom she always loves and this generation is formed in the center of her continuous love see then what an incessant love means to form for oneself the stake on which to consume and burn oneself to be able to form in that stake the life of your beloved jesus one can say in the continuous love i consume my life to make live again he whom i incessantly love oh had i not always loved the creature and if i did not love her with a love that never says enough i would never have descended from heaven to earth to give her my life with so many pains and heroism for love of her it was my continuous love 
that like sweet chain drew me and made me do the heroic act of laying down my life in order to purchase hers. A continuous love can reach anything. It can do anything. It facilitates everything. And it knows how to convert everything into love. On the other hand, a broken love can be called love of circumstances, interested love, craven love, which can reach the point, if the circumstances change, of denying and maybe even despising the one whom it loved. More so, since only the continuous acts form life in the creature. As she forms her act, in her very act arises the light, the love, the sanctity, the grace, according to the act that she does. Therefore, an uninterrupted love and good cannot be called either true love or true life or true good. Then he added with a more tender tone, My daughter, if you want your Jesus to accomplish in you his loving designs, let your love and your acts be continuous in my will. In fact, when my will finds continuity, it finds its way of divine acting and remains engaged in the perennial act of the creature and it hastens to do what it has established for her, finding, by virtue of her incessant acts, the space, the necessary preparations, and the very life in which it can form its admirable designs and accomplish its most beautiful works. More so, since in each act done in my will is one more retying that is formed between the divine will and the human. It is one more step that she takes in the sea of the fiat. It is a greater right that the soul acquires. After this, I continued to pray before the tabernacle of love, and in my interior I said to myself, What do you do, my love, in this prison of love? And Jesus, all goodness, told me, My daughter, do you want to know what I do? I do my day. You must know that my whole life spent down here, I enclose within one day. My day begins by being conceived and being born. The veils of the sacramental accidents serve me as swaddling clothes for my tender age. And when, because of human ingratitude, they leave me alone and try to offend me, I do my exile, left with only the company of some loving soul, who, like a second mother, cannot detach herself from me and keeps me faithful company. From the exile I move on to Nazareth, doing my hidden life, in the company of those few good who surround me. And continuing my day, as creatures draw near to receive me, I do my public life, repeating my evangelical scenes, offering to each one my teachings, the helps, the comforts that are necessary for them. I act as father as teacher, as doctor, and if needed, also as judge. So I spend my day waiting for all, and doing good to all. And oh, how many times I have to remain alone, without a heart that would palpitate near me. I feel a desert around me, and I remain alone alone, praying. I feel the loneliness of my days that I spent in the desert down here, and oh, how painful it is for me. 
I, who am heartbeat for all in each heart. Jealous I guard everyone, feeling isolated and abandoned. But my day does not end with a soul abandonment. There is not one day in which ungrateful souls do not offend me and receive me sacrilegiously and make me complete my day with my passion and my death on the cross. Sacrilege is the most ruthless death that I receive in this sacrament of love. So in this tabernacle, I do my day by carrying out everything I carried out in the 33 years of my mortal life. And just as in everything I did and do, the prime purpose, the prime act of life, is the will of my Father, that it be done on earth as it is in heaven. So in this little host, I do nothing other than implore that one be my will with my children. And I call you in this divine will, in which you find my whole life in act, and you, by following it, ruminating it, and offering it, unite yourself with me in my Eucharistic day, to obtain that my will be known and reign upon earth. And so you too shall be able to say, I do my day together with Jesus. Fiat. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 29, Part 13. Fiat.